Hey everyone. In this uh, video, uh, we're going to go ahead and configure our NetOps server to be our centralized syslog. Uh, we're going to use our syslog on the cent, uh, uh, cent OS 8. Uh, it's natively installed already. Um, go through the configuration, ensure that we open up the ports to allow our switches and routers to write to this uh, device. One of the things that we're going to also do is make sure that each of the each of the systems that writes to the syslog writes to its own file uh, based on the IP address that uh, comes in. Let's go ahead and get started. We're on the server here. Oops, I'm not sure we get over here. All right, on the server, uh, let's sudo dash i to elevate our privileges, test one, two, three. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and edit our, uh, our syslog config file. Uh, vi on uh, the Etsy, and that's the our syslog config file. Now there's quite a bit of information in here, but we're really only concerned about a couple of things. Uh, hit I to insert information. Uh, we're going to find the UDP uh, syslog information. So we're going to open these ports here. Uh, just uncomment both of these lines under the UDP syslog reception. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is set up the policy uh, template under rules. Uh, did I, I blew right by it. Under rules, uh, we're going to set up a template. Uh, template. Uh, to uh, break those uh, individual log files as they come out in into their own files. Uh, so we say we start off with dollar template <coughs> and we name our template whatever we want. Uh, we'll just say remote uh, comma and then we're going to set the location of the files to write. Uh, those are going to be in var log logs. Uh, then we're going to set the file name to the from host IP uh, surrounded by percent signs. Uh, then we'll separate it with a dash dot log to finish out the log file name. Uh, close off with a double quote. And then we'll say asterisk dot asterisk and attach our template remote. Hit enter and then we're going to ampersand space until the to stop processing after it writes to uh, that file system. And that's all we need uh, in the configuration file. So we'll escape out of there colon WQ to write and quit. Uh, then we're going to set up our firewall rules. So we're going to open up the firewall ports. Uh, we're going to set a permanent setting to add our port, uh, port 514 uh, on UDP. Okay, I've already done this before. so. It, just telling me it's already in the policy, but it successfully uh, added it anyway. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and reload the firewall uh, to make sure that those settings uh, make sure those settings get implemented. And we're successful there. And then we're also going to make sure uh, the system. Uh, CTL. Uh, we're going to restart. Uh, restart our, our syslog service so that our config file gets loaded back into the system as well uh, and implements the changes that we made. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that we also enable the rsyslog to start. Okay. 
uh, if we change our directory to the uh, var var log and syslogs, or you can see that file is already created. We only have one uh, file in here right now from the local system. Okay. Okay, so let's go over to switch one and let's enable some logging to see this in action. Uh, so config T, uh, we're gonna start off with logging. Uh, let's set our log buffer. 100,000 informational. Uh, we're gonna set our uh, logging trap to informational. Let's also set our logging source interface to VLAN um, 15 from switch uh, one. And our logging host is going to be 172.30.100.30. Uh, I'm going to set a session ID to the host name. And we should have a log file. So here we go. Uh, this file was just created, 10.10.15.10, uh, .10 which is the IP address of switch one. Uh, we can verify that by a show IP interface. Brave type exclude assigned. Oops. Unassigned. 10.10.15.10. Uh, the exclude the unassigned uh, just helps if you've got a really uh, a bunch of interfaces on the switch it, it gets you just what you want to see all right so we've got that file uh, one of the things that we can do is we can tail space dash f that file and we see we've got a couple of logs uh, uh, lines generated in that log file uh, so let's go ahead and configure uh, the archive to send some syslog information every time we make a configuration change or input a configuration into the uh, device. So I'll enable the archive. We're going to log the config. We're going to enable logging. We're going to set the log size to 1000. We're going to notify our syslog. Uh, the content type is going to be plain text and we're going to hide our keys. Okay. So we see we're getting these logs generated and they're being generated here too. Now what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and split this screen and as I make changes we can see that they'll pop up in the syslog as well. So if I do config T interface range uh, gig one zero through three. Oh, I'm on the wrong device. Config T interface range gig one zero through three. Let's sh shut. No shut. Description vacant uh, vacant colon. And you see, every time I make a change, it's logging to our log buffer as well as the uh, syslog server. So that's the that's the syslog in action. So. Every time that we uh, configure another device, uh, it's going to write a new file into that directory. Uh, so if we close that and we were to configure main ISP to do the same thing and say logging, uh, logging buffered informational logging trap. 
informational. We're going to do a logging source on this one of loopback zero. Uh, we're going to set our login host 172.30.100.30. Our session ID host name. We got log file that should be generated now. And we see 10.0.0.0. Again, we can tail that log. And we can see as we make changes to the device, uh, it will be implemented down on the syslog as well as our log buffer. So if we enable the archive here, uh, log config, I'm just going to say notify our syslog. Uh, content type, plain text, hide keys, logging enabled, logging size, 1000. Yep. As you see, we're getting log messages on both sides. Uh, if we write that, you should see the get into this successfully and we know our log file is working our syslog is working so really great uh, really great knowledge to have uh, if you've got a Linux box in your environment and you want to set up a syslog server uh, like we did here in the lab uh, it's going to be useful for multiple different reasons so I hope you found this informative. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe to be notified of new video content.